Mr. Napoleon. What the hell have you done over here? Yes, this is historically 1815, just before the Battle of the Waterloo, so the last coalition against the Napoleon. This little coalition will be my today's enemy to save the historically ruined Napoleon's campaign. This is definitely gonna be interesting and you know why. The last coalition against Napoleon. Ah, it's just pretty much whole Europe against one tiny France and in numbers, in U4 numbers, we do have, wow, 160,000 troops, but our enemies, yes, it's over 1.2 million of the troops. They almost have 10 times more troops than us, not to count the navy. So about the navy, I can see that our economy is ooh, nice, 95 of income, while 20 of it is going on the maintenance of the fleet, which is gonna do to us absolutely nothing when you look at our enemies' numbers. So let me delete all of the heavy ships, let me delete all of the transport ships and let me turn off the trade ships because I might use them later. So now I'm spending 1, not 20 ducats on the navy and I'm spending 49 on the fort's maintenance. And this is actually good news because look, we have level 8 and level 6 fort all over the place. I don't just need that many of them. So to clear it a little bit, I'm gonna delete some of the less useful forts. For example, Schochte is completely not of use. I don't need those two, let me just keep one of them. And from those four forts, I also don't need that many. Theoretically, I should delete one of those two, but that is fine. And from those three forts, I can also keep only two of them. So let me delete Narbonne and just keep Gascogne and Roussillon. Those will be the perfect defense points against our enemies. And let me also turn off the forts inside our country. I don't need this fort for sure, as I'm not using them right now, right? They will be of use if they start breaking through the fort lines. So now I'm spending just 34 on our forts, so we have 70 of balance. At the same time, let me bring all of the troops in one place because we need to reorganize our stacks. I can find an Indian trade company because yes, we have this one province over here called Kudalore that is in our hands. Very useful. The policies is giving us a very nice choice to boost our army quality. Let me take the discipline. And for now, nothing else. I'll take more military policies once we start fighting. And finally, for the administrative policies, I'll go for the national unrest and stop cost modifier. We are Catholic, not so much useful because we have this modifier. As we are birthplace of the revolution, Pope hates our guts. Our autonomy during the war is decreasing 0.10 monthly, so theoretically, I could take down our crown land by 10%. To take it by 10%, I'll take the meal points from the nobility, then I'll take also manpower from them and a cheaper advisor, then for the clergy I'll only take the cheaper advisor, and from the bourgeoisie I'll take the cheaper advisor, as well as 1% loans and the prestige. Of course, that's decreasing our maximum absolutism, but at this point of the game, when we just want to defend this country, it's not that important. The mission tree can centralize France. Whoa, guarantee from progress on this age. When you start in 1815, you start with absolutely nothing. So that's helpful, but not that much. Then I can take Conquer Burgundy. Whoa, some claims. Subjugate Lorraine. More claims. Annex Alsace. That's an expansion in back that we might need for the peace deal over here, so I'll just take it soon. Dominate the Europe, which is claim on Mazovia. Wow, we can recreate the Polish Empire. That might be an end goal for this campaign. And finally, the colonial expansion doesn't really matter. For the advisors, our Emperor Louis XVIII de Bourbon is having more of armies. Useful, but he's also 4 3 2. We need the mill points. Let me focus on the mill. Then I will take the discipline advisor, take the trade efficiency advisor, and finally, maybe the stab cost guy, actually, because he's 50% cheaper. Now, the show merchant that has got, I will send him to Rhineland to transfer trade power to champagne. Become the defender of faith for this additional morale, so right now we are at 9.7 of it, which compared to our enemies is significantly better. Even Prussia has 8.4 and only 120% of the discipline. That's gonna be a massacre. Watch and learn, Mr. Napoleon, how you win with the true coalition. By the way, did you know that Napoleon was scared of cats? Maybe this is because he didn't even have a chance against the coalition. With the powers of cats, right, Kitty? You can do everything. <gasps> we have one furnace! Let me build it. That might be a nice boost to our economy. And with the money that we are having, I want to build 
at least three additional manufacturers. Good that we have 100 army professions, I can just burn it and create more artillery because 17,000 is not much and we have 47,000 of calf. For the battles, I will be considering the calf stacks and get more artillery. Let me make it 40,000 and let me show the power, the full back of artillery. 20, 3, which gives us another mission, very key bonus that we do really need XP mineral discost. Yes, that's the most useful mechanic in game. Actually, to establish the musketeers, we need 10 mil points per month. Right now we are getting 9. So let me just do two things. First of all, let me get a leader to an army. To unlock me this mission, so get the golden era after Mavic. Get the golden era that gives us 10.3 morale. Then I'll take level 2 advisor over here. I just need to take a loan for that. Also, cancel the privilege, take the one person loans again. We need more money to invest into the country. Level 2 advisor establish the musketeers that's giving us additional 10 percent army professionally. So let me actually burn another 5 percent, then take it. That's also manpower in Paris and garrison growth and local defensiveness. We are actually in the late game, right? So the current combative is 40. This is why I'm just getting all of the artillery that we're having. Let me take 30k of infantry and 10k of calf. We want to get rid of the calf ASAP. Never mind, they decided to run away, but they ran away to Girona. So just let this stack go over here. I get the force march. I'll make sure... Oh, stop raiding me. I'll make sure to catch them. They're trying to run away. Look at this. 120, 115, 125. 7.5, 10.3 of morale. I think that should be an easy stack wipe. That's 8.8% of the war score because the war goal of this war is show super ready. So this is just the perfect war goal in our case. And now we just wait for the enemies to come. We keep wiping them, we keep getting the war score, and we keep just defending. In the meantime, Austria is having problems with some Milanese separatists. Ottomans have problems with someone in the Balkans, but of course they're not at war with us. Just wherever they come, I'll just be getting the defensive addicts, so it'll take them even more time than it already does. And they're also running away, even though there is no chance that they can see us. You can't see us! Why are you running away? Netherlands have level 2 forts. Can I separate piece them in this war? I can, let me just separate piece them. In order to do a proper siege over here in the Netherlands. Oh, they have one level 2 forts and those are level 6 forts. I will split our artillery in the half. So I will be sitting down with the two stacks at the same time. I will leave 20 characters stack to siege down Netherlands and peace them out separately. I can start going around and wipe some shit. And of course they keep running away because AI has cheats. They know that you are coming, but it doesn't matter. You are gonna get wiped 6.8 morale anyway. And Mr. Russia! Hello Mr. Russia! You want to fight as well? What is your army called? The 105% discipline. I don't think it ends up well for you. <sighs> I also noticed that Prash is having level 2 forts over here in Germany, so I can get them for more war score. Because in the meantime, those guys are trying to shoot down level 8 forts, which is gonna take them ages without artillery and with my defensive edicts. I'm doing that because. Look, from battles you can get up to 40% of the war score and of course 25 of ticking war score. That might be enough to take whatever you want, but that's the peak. And in the meantime, I just want to get war score from different sources, like for that example, searching now the force. Of course, they will be taking provinces like Corsica, Corfu in the meantime, but I don't care. If you're talking about historical, you know, fun facts, did you know that actually Napoleon really liked to walk the streets of Paris in disguise? Meaning that he has some weird appearance so nobody would recognize him and then he was just talking to the normal people of France. Asking them of their opinion, what they are thinking and I even read that he was doing quizzes with them. Let's see, what does Prussian quality looks like? Of course they do have Russians as well, but I don't want to let them siege down this fort. And so what wipe this 50k before this 50k will be able to reinforce? Waterloo 2.0. Let me leave 1k on the siege. We need to reinforce with all the others because without reinforcements. Hold your ground when you fight to those who fight. Yes, but it's yeah, it's better to be safe than sorry and just reinforce. In the meantime, it got another fort in Prussia. Let me go for Berg now. Hello there, Prussia. I've heard your army quality is one of the best in the world. Well, 
It's actually decent, same discipline, only two less morale than us, but I shouldn't be even able to stack wipe that. That means that Prussian quality is actually decent. Even though I already killed 400,000 of their troops, they are still having over 900,000. At this point, I need just to pick up smaller stacks, like for example, 40k Russians. Yeah, I consider that a smaller stack. Wipe them out of the map before anyone reinforces with losing only 3,000 troops. Right now in Netherlands there are approximately around 300,000 of their troops. I can't really fight with this amount, so just letting them go on this level 6 fort while I will be sieging them Prussia. I want to stop this siege from happening, there's only 27,000 of Swedes. I should be able to wipe them before anyone even thinks about reinforcing it. One day, two days, three days, that's more than I wanted it to. Ah! Fini okay, 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 okay. I will also scorch earth over here, just so for the future battle it will be easier. We've run out of the manpower! Oh no! Anyway. anyway, let me just slacken it. By the way, did you know that even though we're not really a revolution, we still do have a revolution target, which is giving us more of armies, national manpower, land force limit. These battles are gonna be hell of a risk. What about piecing out Netherlands? for two trade centers in the English Channel, so Antwerpen and Brisch, just a little bit of the money, as much as they are accepting, send it, that decreased our war score by two, and we got two key provinces thanks to it. I should be able to wipe this Prussian troops because they have nowhere to run away to. Let me go do the same to Russians now. Mr. Russia. Bye, 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 bye. So what I was thinking to do, let me just split this tax on a half, so they're both gonna use 20,000 of artillery. I cannot afford more. And they're also ha gonna have 55 on each of the front row. Meaning that, okay, I'm not fully efficient because I have more than the combat with the front line, but I'm also too lazy to reinforce with 14,000 troops. So I'm just gonna keep this so they will be in the reserves at the start of the battle. Now the loser's counter also is not gonna be efficient because it's 570,000 and it does not include losers that I did on the Netherlands. I don't think that's possible, but are we actually winning 60k against 250k of Hold your ground. That might be double, but we would rather run out of the reserves than win it. Vive la France! Vive la France! The revolution advances! Yes! Let's go! Yes! Let's go, that's what I've been waiting for. Let me let the regime just like, take control for the manpower, force limit and the discipline. Now we can play, this battle is still winnable. No surrender, shoot to kill. Come on, look at this, 20,000, 160,000. No, we've lost. But we fought this bravely for the matter of the revolution. And we're running away to the province just next by- No, God, please, no, no! Are you out of your mind? What if you scored it and get the force mass? Yes. <sighs> Run away, fools. Remember, for being a revolution, we additionally got 10% more of armies, monthly autonomy change 0.2, and maximum revolution 0 plus 50, so it's right now at 69, because we also do not have any estates. Shall we try again fighting? This time I'll do it properly. Full back row of artillery, full front row of the normal troops, and the reinforcement stack. With the reinforcement stack, we can see that half of it is still the troops that are reinforcing. So let them stay at home and reinforce. Screw it, I think getting Prussia out of this war will be the key to easily winning that. I just need to push them a little bit more. To make that happen, we'll engage them on Berg. Ah, that's only the Russians. And we'll go to Munster without trying to catch anyone. Let's siege down this fort. Slowly, Russians are trying to go for Honchkomp, those are level 2 forts. So I have quickly to reorganize after getting this fort and wipe them. Why are you waiting for the forts to go down? I have another fun fact about the Napoleon for you. Did you know that he actually wasn't as short as everyone's miming is about? He was like 168, of course it's for today's standards, it's not that tall, but it wasn't short for his times, like to compare, Stalin was 165, he was shorter than Napoleon. Catherine the Great, of course she was a woman, but she was 11 centimeters shorter than Napoleon. Or even Frederick the Great, he was 160, 8 centimeters shorter than Napoleon. There we go, Prussia would like to peace out us, and I can even take 170 bucks to fuck off. Bye bye Mr. Prussia. 
Of course, the amount of the losses dropped again. Hello there, Mr. Sardinia Piedmont. You wanted to siege down the province? No, you didn't. Hello there, Austria. You wanted to siege down something over here? No, you didn't. With Prussia pissed out, looks like the front line is moving to southern France, which is good because I would like to take some provinces from Sardinia Piedmont for more trade power in Genoa. The moment they've heard that, they would like to white piece me. But of course that's not gonna happen, the new world is really liking us. Haiti would like an alliance, of course, with a pleasure. Sardinia Piedmont, let me get access to Genoa. Thank you so much and I'm gonna right away declare on Lucca to get another trade center here and soon I'll also attack Tuscany, because they are at Austria, so as long as Austria is at war with us, they cannot help Tuscany. In the meantime, got slightly outnumbered here. So let me just run away from this battle. Ah! I barely managed to do so. Doesn't really matter. Goodbye, Mr. Russia. Only 400,000 of them had to die. And now we are left with only a few countries inside the coalition. The moment Spain goes labour for themselves, that can be white piece. <laughs> this siege like meant absolutely nothing because they no longer control it. And I think Portugal should be also very willing to get out of this in a second. With Luca taken and Tuscany taken, that's gonna be some expansion, but not that much. We are gonna establish a nice trade amount of the trade value that we'll be having in Genoa. And if we move our main node here, we might actually start earning. A decent amount of money. Now we can also freely white piece Austria, sure, why not? And we're left with Great Britain and Sweden in the war. As we can't really take any provinces from them, I'm gonna do a few interesting things. War operations, full money, 4000, break your alliance with Prussia, break your alliance with Russia, and send this. Thank you so much. With this money, I can start investing. There are a couple of things to invest on. First of all, I need to start coring those provinces. And once I core them, I'll move my main node here. In the meantime, I can start improving my trade centers to level 2. With no wars happening, I can move both of my forts and turn off the army and actually start earning money. Thirdly, the game ends in January 1821, but we can continue if that's not an Iron Man game. We not an Iron Man game because we started later. So I'm gonna play a couple of more years only to stabilize this country and show how beautiful it can look. Of course, the funny thing about 1821 is that one year events for the prices of the trade goes there until January 1821. So you can see my income dropped by 25 because simply trade the goods prices got reset. They are the same as 1444 now. French Revolution, 5% admin efficiency and 25 religious zeal which means that we are at 35 already. If the building is done, it's perfectly balanced. 28, 28, 38. Let me move my main node to the English channel. And then we need to wait a month. Tick. Right now our trade income is 38.96. First things first, it decreased to 40, but I can send my merchants to Champagne to transfer my whole power to the English channel. And I can transfer also from Bordeaux. Okay, with 153 of total income, 138k of maximum power, 224 limited, 12 morale for 130 discipline. This campaign is absolutely finished. Do you do not have to thank Mr. Napoleon, you just had to use the cats. So guys, if you enjoy this type of content, so saving historic ruined campaigns, remember to leave a like on this video and say in comments what type of a campaign I should save in the future. And as we are about to hit 90,000 subscribers, you can also subscribe to get notified about all the new content that I'll be producing in the new future. A lot of amazing stuff coming.